Oh, Jun now goes in. Alvro stunned up with the shadowing strike. Now Yoya coming in as well. Jun falling low and he's hit with a winter's bite. Humano just walks him down. The Ignite taking the buster shot. Super kills him. The dash in from Jun is blocked by the Unbreakable. And Fnatic went forward, but the only place they're going is back to the fountain. Okay, the Fnatic won't. Even Ren no flash, Ren no flash. Okay, you are the goal. Are you okay? Bro, press. You are on prime. Now we're going to start not sure. Another game five, and MDK, man, whenever you underestimate them, whenever you write them off, they're just going to win the game, perhaps even make it to the grand finals next week off this next one. And you know, analysts, right? What's that lower for GB in there? What is that? I don't know what that is. What did you put in, Eve? I didn't do anything. Um, I just think that maybe GB would be... Baffled? Oh my if MDK god. Wins this game. For context, okay, I saw this draft and I thought to myself, I see Nidalee, I see a LeBlanc, I see very limited tools to find engage here as well. The late game here, they had a hard time playing with the Nidalee in the four earlier games. So I thought this game as well is going to be even more difficult to play out. And it was as well in the late it game. Was, it I'm was. just saying, uh, Elioya saved their early game. Like, Elioya single handedly kept them in the early game. I mean, I, I have to say, considering how the game panned out in the end, I would be baffled as well. Like, I am fuming on behalf of all Fnatic fans out there who had to witness that, oh, that's EU <laughs> I'm so league, baby. Right that's now. EU like, league. That, what that's kind what of we throw want. is that? Yeah, that's our league. That's our world's team, baby. <laughs> I'm still shocked, guys. I mean, is this how it feels? Because for me, it's the first time where I see throws like this being on the desk. <laughs> it, it, yeah. You're welcome. Is, is this how it feels like when, when, when I used and we used to throw games like that? Because this is just... What's the biggest throw that world. happened in this game? There's a lot, but for the, what I'm paying attention to is the fact that I'm seeing Jun jump in after two targets are getting Tristana ulted, right? So he's looking for the play. He's been doing this a lot this game where he wants to move forward. He moves forward now after they get Tristana ulted. He finds absolutely no one and is isolated and will die. The rest of MDK is just scattered, or uh, Fatig is just scattered now. And for me, highlight there is just poor Oscar, you know, he's the Cassante who is like, well, I have this guy who's just full sending it, you know, my Tristana has one HP and I'm somewhere in the middle trying to help everyone and then he's the one who ends up looking like the fool I here, love this sadly. from our top laner because a lot of people were flaming him, but you say, wasn't he his fault. He is the victim, he is the victim, victim here, you know, <laughs> he's just like, top he, it's straight up a crime. Um, but hey, for MDK, I mean, it got super, super hectic and all that, but we were saying in that early game, to be a captain, El Yoya dragging them, kicking and screaming to uh, that mid game, out of that early game, into a possible game five. Wow. Yeah, I mean, his El Yoya was just, I mean, El Yoya, his, El Yoya his El Yoya was, uh, was just fantastic. We're not looking at a champion, we're looking at El Yoya. And he was just down bot lane at the right time uh, every single time that a battle brought out. And he was just there to make sure that they could get a lead on Super that they were able to play off. I think it's worth noting that more or less everything we saw from Fnatic here, at least from my point of view, was pure mental. Like, we saw Jun getting called out, Nova yeah. extending repeatedly. We saw Noah having a, a hiccup where he got caught as well, which is something we've seen in the past. And, and really, this has been the one thing haunting Fnatic this entire year, that when the pressure is on and when they're so close to the trophy, they always fold up. I just want someone to look at me the way Elioy is looking at his bot lane, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, that is just a guy that loves him, that wants to play for Let's them, who wants to nurture them, like, oh. Oh God, I good. didn't actually mean it, now I feel uncomfortable. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna get out of here, we'll come back. But uh, Lore was able to catch up with Melza again, the coach for MDK, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes into that game. So let's see what information she got. Zef, Nitali, again, uh, when Yoya said that you, you guys never want to play the champion again, you lost the previous game with that champion. What makes you sure that it is the right Nitali angle this time around? Well, in this game, we have to blind pick a champion, right? Mm -hmm. And Miri's comfort is Nidalee, so we opted for it. Most likely, we thought we were going to go Rumble or Cassante, so we're okay. pretty happy with the matchup in general. See, but comfort is one thing, but how do you think it goes overall with the rest of your composition and how you think it's going to match against Fnatic's composition in the later sa stages of the game? Well, I mean, looking at the composition, right? I think mm -hmm. they want to play front to back and yeah. want to DPS the first target. I think we want to do the same, but we want to play with the range, play with the Leblanc, the Ezreal, mm -hmm. try to disengage, play slow. Uh, so I think that's where Nidali will shine, try to All play right. on, off of the side, annoy their backline and stuff like that, right? Kind of like LeBlanc. I see. Now, let's go a bit into the future. You're prepping for Game 5, of course. Is it something that you're prepping right now? And if so, how? And how did you manage expectations progressing into the series today? I mean, 
Okay. Uh, usually, <laughs> good, yeah. usually, right uh, after game five, we're just just like every other game. We try to be comfortable and have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me personally, I think we try to put them off of their comfort, uh, like we did in the in this draft. But maybe for the game five, we're gonna try to change the band, try to do something they won't expect, so that we can throw off their preparation for this game. Surprise them the most. Thank you so yeah. much, Dev. No problem. Thank you, Laura. It was F. It wasn't Melzet. And uh, good foresight already thinking about game five. But this Nidalee thing is so baffling to me because you both play on pro teams, right? You counterpick, right? The Nidalee, it worked as a counterpick. It didn't work into winning the game in, uh, in that game three. Then you blind pick it in the game that can end your run here in terms of making it to the grand finals directly. I mean, I'm just I mean. Nothing, nothing that just happened in game four makes any sense because somehow they're picking this Nidalee, they're pairing it with a LeBlanc, they're pairing it with an Ivern as well, and in isolation it just looks so incredibly troll and useless. But at the same time, it was genius because we did, we did see Caster, Caster saw, said it many times. It became this random war of attrition where the only engage the Fnatic has is the Rel, followed up with the Zyra, and it just became so, so hard for Fnatic to find engages, but at the same time, when they did, it was they were just clapping them really, really hard. But so I, I don't know, man. It, 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 it's way beyond me. Like I, I'm, I'm really sorry. They're selecting uh, the red side. I want to bring up some images from MDK back in winter because we gotta remember they step into this game five because they want to win it and they want to get another chance at winning a trophy. And that was so many days ago. This was when we had all the hope. This is when we thought, yes, this rookie roster led by El Yoya is going to break records is going to do great. They made it already to the final in the first time, but then it was meddling Goldberg. And I absolutely love the fact that they're bringing it to Fnatic again, you know, no matter what all the haters have been saying all year. And yes, they went missing for some of the, the mid-year, but you got to peak at the right time. Exactly, but I think it's still important. Like this team looked lost. This team looked like something that was not going to work and it looked like a failed project. But you're right, you got to peak at the right time. And right now, MDK's peaking. They took G2 in a best of five. Fnatic, game five, kind of looking like the same thing with an Olympic, you never know. Who's winning? MDK for the dankest timeline, I guess. Yeah, I agree. I want to see Fnatic G2 in the series. That would be a banger at this point. <laughs> well, I went with Fnatic early. I'm not going to back down from He's my prediction, so He's I'm still saying Fnatic. Flip. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, it's our last weekend here in the Berlin studio, and we're going all the way. Ten games, MDK or Fnatic? Fetty, who's it going to be? It's not, I, I'm not allowed to predict, Sharks. I'm not allowed to predict. Nice try, though. Nice try. My job is to just talk about the facts that I see in the game, and I'm guaranteed some fun facts as we get ready for game five. Okay, hit us. No, yeah. We haven't gotten the game yet, We're Medic. I've got ready. no hit fun me. facts. Guarantee some. All right, fun fact. Did you know that Sisyphus is a man that kept trying to push a boulder up a mountain, but he kept failing? Uh, and we'll why? see. Why if... did he have to push a boulder up a mountain, Betty? Because he was punished for, uh, I believe, bringing fire to man. No, that was for uh... me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, he was meant to die, and then he concocted a potion that got him out of but the see, underworld. That's where it stopped being a fun fact. That's a bit of a dark yeah, fact. Yeah, that was a dark he, fact. Betty was only going with the fun yeah, fact. Uh, that's true. I mean, as opposed to pushing yeah, up yeah. a mountain, uh, pushing Forever. a boulder yeah, yeah, yeah. up a mountain. Well, that's honestly, nice I feel like frolicky. the we can pair MDK to Sisyphus as they've continued to fight their way from 10th place at the end of Summer Split to the tiebreakers to the Summer Split playoffs into the season finals and now one game away from potentially making it to the finals. So what you're saying is they'll fail now? I mean, we're going to find out, okay. won't we? <laughs> well, we have to figure out if Betty is a prophet, as he has concluded <laughs> to. The Oracle has spoken, but will the Oracle speak and ban the Ash? Why or what will be this final ban coming through for Fnatic? as we start to crest on through into game number five of this series. Ivan, a change ban from the last game. Mad Lions Koi still removing the Azir and the Yone. Smolder and MF taken away by Fnatic. As you say, will it be the Ash Devai? It's the Maokai instead. As you're going to be the first lock-in. I assumed it was going to be a Corky Maokai lock-in for Fnatic. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. They may still want to grab Corky for themselves unless they value the Tristana. You could go Corky Sedge if you wanted a jungler. Could go Corky Zeri if you want to give Noah something that he is comfortable on. Didn't have the best of games on it in game four. They could also just grab themselves Ash. Corky also Ash. true. Yeah. Would be fine. They could take the Nidalee. Oh. <laughs> it's not going to happen, but it I would be very funny. I love the smile on Razor's face as he hovered that. Just the willow. Uh, but no. Just going to take it. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, yeah. I. You can see the energy though on stage. Like he's looking over at Razor. Yeah. The, the <laughs> 
Uh, the players are having a lot of fun. And again, like, this is something that MDK have talked to us a lot about, how the biggest hurdle for them that they needed to overcome was that mental that they kept struggling with when intense things got intense. But uh, they've had nothing but smiles on their faces throughout this series. Fnatic looking to try and stay strong in that same vein. They fell short of the final hurdle in the previous game, but they know they have the capacity to win out on this series. As we move into this final phase, I wonder if they'll look to lock in support here. Maybe something like a Lulu, that range support potentially to answer into the Braum. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The preemptive Braum is really interesting because it could end up going for the Rakan here and they will, but it just means that then it's not guaranteed to be something that struggles against the Braum. Like an Alistair or Leona, the Rakan can still look for that engage and then have that disengage for himself as well. So nice pickup here. Does mean the composition's a little squishy. So I think we'll be looking towards Oscar in for a potential, you know, Cassante on this next rotation or something like a Sejuani in the jungle, unless that is banned away by Madeline's. I mean, both the teams still have to pick their junglers, both the teams still have to pick their top laners, we assume. Oh, with it's Mirwin. fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's Poppy, but yes, and no, 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 by no, away, yes, by a... <laughs> It's good, because I was looking at the first ban, and you no, were looking at I heard second. you say, um, they've still got to pick their junglers, yes. and then my brain went, ah, oh, it's Vi based on the Poppy ban. Okay, but then Vi um, was banned away. Yes, because the Mad Lions are the same exact fault yep. that I had. <laughs> uh, now Fnatic is contemplating what they want to remove next. Lilia, an AP option, makes a lot of sense. Like, they give me something like the Zyra or the Brand that's going to come through. Sejuani has fallen to the wayside uh, so far in Season Finals, at least in Europe. Not something that uh, we've seen from many teams. And I don't really think Fnatic love it into the Braum specifically, especially with 280 carries that have that much mobility. Mad Lion's quite going to ban away the Narsus. You already talked a lot about it. Dagged uh, something that the LPL has taken a liking to with this pick specifically. Shanji even very much trying to bring that one out, but here's the Sejuani lock-in. I think even if it's not great into the Braum, I still think you just need that front line and engage tool. Like Rakan can play engage, but I definitely prefer him as a secondary engage tool. Or at least to try and follow up. So Sejuani and then the question mark for me is if Oscar is trying to eye up even maybe further engage like an Orn and just really play heavily for these team fights, but you don't really have the AP damage, so Rumble could be the other option. Cannon. Cannon Cannon's made his there. way through. I'd love Cannon with a Sedge and a, and a Rakan alongside it. A Moomoo oh. is the pick. <laughs> it's a Moomoo jungle. The Mad Lions yeah, boy. They needed an AP threat and it's they've gone giant. for a Moomoo. <laughs> Alio, I love the fact that Alio was also looking over at Fnatic while it was locked yeah. in. He was like, oh, how'd you feel about this one? Well, Alio has never played a Moomoo on the <laughs> professional stage. Yeah, but that's that Mad Lions Koi. That's I the mean, beauty yeah. of them, right? Like, they're willing to just pick champs that they have never played before. And they'll just say, you know what? We need an AP champ. Let's bring something out. Fnatic, now the composition needs a little bit more AP damage. They're hovering over the cannon, they're contemplating the rumble. I think the range of the cannon kind of makes it a bit easier into the Nidalee in the early game in the laning phase. It's also just a counter punch for the Amumu, right? Amumu yeah. is very telegraphed when he goes in. So if you can then have that flank position for the cannon, you can try and provide that counter engage. So I do like us here in reaction to the rumble, whereas again, as you say, kind of just adding more to that engage tool that I think Fnatic needs. Moo Moo Jungle from MDK. They couldn't end this series without bringing out something <laughs> unique. I bet you they haven't practiced this in scrims. Yeah, we're getting I've fed had... up with the Nidalee top, you know. <laughs> they were like, hey, we need something new. I mean, apparently that's a comfort pick now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 who, knows? That's a... <laughs> who knows? It's, it's do or die for these two teams. Obviously, the loser will face G2 on Saturday in Munich. The winner will be waiting in the Grand Finals, looking to claim that LEC Championship for 2024. And as a reminder, Fnatic, MDK and G2 are all qualified for this year's World Championship. They're fighting for seeding, first, second, third, yep. which can influence the opponents that you can get in the Swiss stage, which they've also all qualified for. Yeah, went really well for G2 last year when they got first seed. <laughs> <laughs> TL are That's looking what good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's been a long series. It's been a long weekend at here at the LEC. Five games in both days, or ten games today, according to Dagda at the end of the last game. Um, and you have to you have to remember as well for the players how much that does wear on you. Like you've been trying to concentrate fervently for the last five hours or so, well, four hours or so, and it does wear on you. And it can lead to mistakes. And we've seen both teams make mistakes through the last couple of games. The first two games were really clean. And then after that, it's been a little bit more 
tete a tete, a little bit more headbutting each other. That's what I'm hoping for once again in this game. I love action. Now, bring it to me. I promised you fun facts. Hit me. Fun fact number one, MDK have gone for the Skinergy. They're looking for a full-on snowdown showdown. Four Christmas skins with the Frostfire Ezreal skin. To yeah, boot. I mean, that's pretty Christmassy. Yeah, they have fully committed. They've got Christmas present Amumu. They've got Snow Bunny in Italy. They've got Elf Tristana. They're putting on the Christmas theme. Why? When we're in 30 degrees. Say, it's 30 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They looked at their jammer and said, what skins have we got that matches? And this is what they found. I, mean, I would love if they picked the Amumu because <laughs> it has a Christmas skin. Yeah. It was this or Slave El Katarina, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the draft plan. I was like, lads, we need to keep it cool. Keep yeah. it and they were like, we got it. <laughs> At this point, when it comes to MDK's draft discussions, that could be yeah, plausible. Yeah. <laughs> in any case, they've looked, I'm um, sorry, they've gone for early push in the bot side of the map. They've gained control over this this brush. Now, of course, you expect Ezreal and Braum against this matchup. Medic, I'm sure you're very familiar with this matchup. Yeah. Uh, Rakan, a champion that doesn't really offer a huge amount in the early levels. So, I will agree with that. I think what he does offer is okay 2v2 trades because of the Gleaming Foot. Sure. People often undervalue the healing that you can get out of that, and you can run Guardian as well. So you're not going to get push. He doesn't give you any wave control. But if you do get engaged on by the enemy team, you can easily heal it back up. The thing I also like about it is oftentimes when you see an engaged support go in, they have no way to get back out, which is where value comes from the ROM, because you can slow you, you get the proc, and then you outvalue the trade with your shield up. But with the Rakan, you can kind of get the pop up, E back out, and it makes it very difficult to get these trades back. So not only do you have the Gleaming Quill effectively, you then got these nice trades that you can go for. Breakable going to be thrown up to mitigate any potential trade back, but push being gained from DK's bot lane is very much as we expected. In the mid lane, similar situation, and in top lane, it can be said the same. So MDK playing with three pushing lanes right now, giving a lot of space for Alyoya to continue his full clear. As you can see the Sejuani a little bit ahead of the clear for the time being, but Amumu not that far behind. Is Alyoya going to go and try and contest red? It looks like he might be. He might also look towards mid, but because this ward was in, they saw the razor beaks Amumu's being taken. not really a contest the enemy jungle champion. What do you know about a Mumu, huh? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe you're a Mumu, isn't yeah. it? And he's working, well, because sure. you have Mumu in pushing as well, right? So you can flank around the red, see that it's not being done. Razork wisely skipped it. He's gonna get the Crux. Maybe when comes across, he's doesn't manage to steal away from... Well, okay, he's gonna start off the red. He's playing around his pushing lanes well. The question is, will he be able to secure this? He's gonna reset. But Razor. Oh, Razor, no. Oh, Elioia showed. Elioia showed. Oh. He stepped out. He was probably looking for oh, Humanoid, Humanoid under the tower. And remember, Amumu has a second Q, but Humanoid has a minion wave here to save him. Flashes Elioia. away. Counter flash from Elioia. What am I watching right now? This League is of Legends, <laughs> Betty. This, this is, is what peak <laughs> League of Legends looks like. And, and it, it comes com from Europe. <laughs> I was going to say from Amumu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. So let's talk about the theory. Uh, very good. You know, we already talked about the fact that MDK have three pushing lanes, they're leveraging that. It makes it easier for El Yoya's team to help support him in that push. Where things fell awry was the execution. He missed three bandage tosses, and then underneath the tower trying to threaten Humanoid, because the wave got cleared out, he then had to flash away to safety. He's gonna lose his blue. He's got... <laughs> he's the he's got... Sorry, Amumu's blue enough already. <laughs> he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. Good one. Thanks. Uh, so in terms of early advantage, I mean, the other downside is Mirwin kind of forced to use his TP. I guess you could say suboptimal um, of course, he still goes back to base, gets that uh, uh, Ruby, Ruby crystal. crystal, but Oscar isn't forced to expend it, so he's able to walk back to lane knowing that this wave is pushing back towards him. So, um, yeah, I think overall, you could say like small advantage gain for Fnatic, but it really is a very small advantage. Even though not having flash as well does leave him susceptible to ganks in the also future. True. And Luria 6 will be a little bit delayed, but having yet to base, he now is going to go and clear his bot side camps on their respawn. I'm curious how Elioia wants to try and play this because I think there is a window where you can punish Humanoid back on Flash, and especially if you can bring Mirren down into that play, but I think it is going to be somewhat difficult. I think you have to basically hope that you can use the push on top to invade on towards Raptors, push Ryzerk into spots at jungle, and then look for a play off the wall or something along those lines, but at the moment just hovering around this bottom side. Not actually be able to crash this wave though before Elioia can make his way into the Super. 
Well, Super had already got a, a sneaky base off to get himself his tear and that long sword. So we'll be able to catch up in terms of those missing CS. There's nowhere and Jun back away. Humano will be spotted as he walks around this corner. Should be fine with Frescawi TPing back in. Both the mid laners expend. Frescawi gets that Vamp Scepter, which allows him to trade a little bit more aggressively because he can just heal up some damage from Humanoid. Also has a slight XP advantage because Humanoid obviously had to avoid the Amumu Nidalee gank. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah, doesn't surprise me too much considering you want some extra magic damage on this team. You often see Leandri's rush into then tankiness, a bit like some of those Maokai builds yeah. we've been seeing, Dagda. This feels like a Merc Treads game. <laughs> Gents, I'm going to be honest. There's, yeah. There's a Kennen, there's an Amumu, there's a Braum. Even though I jumped on here, Fuscawi still has the flash. Jun here to back up, and there's the bandit shots, Ooh, but a great another, double knock oh. up from Jun. Ilyoya went in, but he's crying now as Fuscawi sent back to the fountain. Razzle looking for more. Ilyoya, bandage shots goes wide, but the unbreakable won't be enough. A phosphorus bomb finds his base and sends him packing. Fnatic found two. And that just little bit of an overextension there cost them. Frescawi is trying to base to get Oyoya into position, but it's Jun on the roam up that doesn't get spotted. Humanoid happy to just go for this aggressive trade, knowing that he's going to have to support there. But watch this knock up from Jun. Gets the shield, the knock up onto Frescawi, right? He's about to come down, and it just buys time for Humanoid to Valkyrie away from Oyoya, and then Razor came to come in off the wings. There's that small moment of patience from Jun. Where is Are we going again? So we're looking for the smite. Jun will be able to dash with both. Jun will be able to dash away. All right, so it's one for two. That. I mean, Humanoid had to go back to base, so wisely Razzle and Jin say, "I don't think we're going to win this fight." Like forced to concede to of the Void Grubs. It's the bot lane trade. Oh, most favorably for Super. No, it's six. Super does not. No, and he hit only the... has a cleanse. Now Super hits the True Shot Barrage. Well, hits the threshold of having that as an ability. So just a bit of trading. Razork does have the smite available. He's got to be careful here. Flash from Albro oh. trying to block the jump away from Razork. And the Sejuani is burnt poor. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Oscar Villain trading with Mirwin had to pop the slicey Maelstrom. The Drake over to MDK as well. And what started out so favorably for Fnatic, now two neutrals will be going over to MDK. Has he done? The fact that they're able to get that pick and Alvaro just barely getting his body in the way to deny Fnatic that escape. Let's go, he wants to trade. He's gonna get knocked up here. That unbreakable will fall off. In the end, beneficial trade for Humanoid and Jun. Drake secured though for MDK. More a distraction from Alvaro and Fuscawi, I believe. They do want to try and get this wave in if they can. Uh, and honestly, like, just greedy play from Razork, trying to go for that Scuttle Crab. It was very clear that you were at a numbers disadvantage, and he thought that because he had the Q available, he'd still be able to get away to safety. But just a great play from Alvaro to mitigate his escape options. They knew he didn't have Flash from the earlier play in mid. And MDK are finally able to get their first kill on the board. The bigger thing, though, so how they convert this into two objectives. Dragon plus the two grubs sets them up nicely here in the early game. I feel like we're still going to be taking this into kind of a slow pace, though. When you look at Fnatic's composition, they really do want to try and get to two to three items, more on the three item side. Sure, MDK can try and play through the fact that you've got Frescawi and Mirren, you should have pushing lanes, but it's not exactly the easiest when Jun has had so many opportunities to try and roam thanks to the push that Noah has on that bottom side. So I think it's just you're limited on your options available to you to try and make plays as MDK. So I think Fnatic should get a chance to just scale into a strong game where they can try and play for these dragons. See Humanoid went plated steel caps first and a cull and a tear. So he's just really playing to uh, to try and survive the laning phase and get towards that two, three items on the core key. It becomes so much more powerful. Yeah, I will say I'm actually kind of I mean that it makes sense in the context of the matchup, especially when you think that the three damage dealers are AD carries. Yeah. But there's a Brawl man, there's an Amoom on the other side. So I guess if you never get CC'd, yeah, it's did, never a problem. I did the logic. Just don't get hit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You, That's where It never gets CC by anything, and then you survive. You can also, of course, go for a QSS or something later on. That's the that speedrunner mentality, right? Yeah, Why do you need gear hit. if you never get hit, right? Yeah. I mean, my general strategy was get hit a ton, but do more damage. Yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Fnatic's top side is getting invaded here. Jun knows something's they know. up, bro. Yeah, knows the same. Those pings, they're like, this doesn't... You look at the minimap, that's the easiest way to tell. Like, is the Fog of War safe? When you look at the minimap and you see only Super, you're like, mm -mm, nope, not safe. <laughs> that is a darkness of danger. 
However, no flash Jun coming in, but Mazok and Jun don't have the damage to get through a Braum at this point in the game. His presence alone. Did you get upset? Oh, I get it. Thanks, That's a good one, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't give it that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Skawi, though. Apparently, you don't need damage items on the Corky to do damage in the early game. You can just trade in with that Gatling gun, reduce the armor of your opponent. As you said, you trade fight. health, but if you do more damage... <laughs> yeah, exactly, it works. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Super being able to pick up a plate in the mid lane. A plate shared three ways. Usually not enough of a morsel for any individual. They're looking for two. Can't quite find it. It's not an all-you-can-eat buffet in mid lane, apparently. Yoya might be coming to eat good, though, because he's about to wrap in towards this mid lane as well. He has that ult available, plus the flash. Could actually just tax himself in off of one of the minions, but decides, you know what, Noah's a bit low instead. Noah uses the dash early there. That means that Lioia can go in. Curse of the Sad Mummy. Noah has no flash, no cleanse, no hope. And Lioia brings a tantrum, and Noah is sent back to the fountain. And they get both of Noah's summoners for it as well. It costs nothing for Lioia. He was just investigating the enemy bot side jungle. He thought that, oh, hey, Noah's probably going to back off. This is an easy play, but it converts it into a kill, and that's going to be even more plates for Super. It's just an early dash from Noah. Like, you, you need to use that re as a reaction to Elio tucking out the uh, bandage toss, but... I think he, because he shot through to try and hit Gromp, I think he expected Elio to immediately throw a bandage toss into the bush, but still, yeah, it was just a weird... Good catch from Elio to find Noah a little bit isolated on that bottom side. Does lose the grubs for it, so Fnatic get four in the end. Drake up in a minute's time. Been a few odd moments through this series, but still on a knife edge between these two teams. For Fnatic, they're trying to realize a, a long-held goal of the organization six years ago, the last time they managed to win an LEC title, including our split titles. You have to remember that. MDK have won more recently, of course. But still, everyone trying to surpass G2 and making your way straight to the grand finals and not having to face them earlier is a good way to do that. It is. It's crazy how in recent history, it's actually been MDK and G2 that have sat at the top of our table. Yep. You know, so long we've considered Fnatic to be the main rival, but honestly, when you look at the organization, the team that keeps getting in G2's way, it's MDK. <laughs> so for them to make it to the grand final would be massive for the organization to return to those heights once more and to do it with a completely different roster as well with El Yoya at the helm. A roster of rookies as well who have really shown up over the course of the year. Like Alvaro setting himself up as one of the great supports we have in the league right now and may need to uh, not be the late great as he tries to escape away here. Yeah, he should be fine just to walk away from this. El Yoya's on his way down, has that curse of the sad mummy again. I think that for a long time, hang on a second. Jun goes in on Super. There's the Arcane Shift away, but the Curse of the Sad Mummy immediately back onto Jun. He dashes away just in time, and the Euro Force to 200 HP. But Super with a true shot barrage goes straight through the heart of Jun. Noah brought back as well. He tries to get the Burst Fire off, but he's not allowed to. Super gets the double. A deft hand in this fight, it seems. Another Mystic shot hits across the wall. He's looking for more. He's chasing down. Razork having to run for the hills, manages to escape, dashing away. Can Humanoid have that same chance? I don't think so. TP in from Did Oscar in, no slicing Maelstrom. They look for the tower for Sky, we can't find it in time. Oscar's half HP with no ultimate, only a flash to try and dash into this fight. Chun now back up and MDK will pull their foot off the gas. One kill at a time. MDK is just gaining more presence on the map. They'll secure the top tower. They'll likely secure the bottom one. The second dragon of the game is going to go their way. Razork is still hovering around, but what options does he really have here? I can dash away, buddy. And that's about it. MDK find two. Super able to dance his way through that fight. Now 3-0-1 with a bounty on his head, a Triforce in his hands. It's only going to keep scaling up on this S. And the play here is to try and get on towards Super, but nice Arcane shift away. And also, I was, I was a bit worried when Ayoye just ulted Jun and he still managed to dash away, but the ult across the top from Super hits onto so many people, does a ton of damage. And for Skewi, the buster shot onto both Noah and Razor, reposition him into the waiting hands of Super, it means that he's able to get the resets on the jumps and set up for the play. And now Mirwin finds Humanoid. Humanoid still has the flash here. Mirwin's going to flash first. Well, the spear land doesn't need it. Just uses an auto attack to send Humanoid down under. 
Eowyn getting a bit of revenge after the previous game. Humanoid on that Tristano is a menace in the side lane, but this game is very quickly falling out of the control of Fnatic. 2,000 gold lead now for MDK. Razorg's fighting a support over his jungle camps. That's how difficult it is for Fnatic to find purchase on the rift right now. Alvaro is going to force Razork away. Goes back in, the unbreakable pop. You can see Oscar in and looking for the flank in the mid lane. Alvaro still has someone to dash to. Super's there to come to his aid. Oscar in and his avoided detection, I believe, goes in with the oracles. This is a 4v3. Mirwin not able to come across in time. Humanoid has the TP. Oscar unable to get close enough yet. Noah dashes in, lightning crash. The Rift held, smited, Razzle trying to get behind them here. Oscar in is still on that flank, the quickness onto four. Oscar has the flash, but the Glacial Fisher will lock him up. He stunned immediately. Fnatic dived in one by one. The man have still die after. Super has the red buffs, the upper buffs. Noah dashes across the wall. Piscawi here to join the party. Humanoid is not. But no, Jun and Razok will be able to escape. The Rift Herald was picked up by Mirwin in the end. Fnatic, that was your chance. They could have had that moment to find the fight against MDK, but the hero play from Alvaro, the knock up onto Oscar as he tries to make the play, and MDK turn it back in Fnatic's face, and they're getting so much more on the map. I mean, it wasn't just Alvaro, the ulti from Aljoya as well. The flash came in from Oscar, and and it was Oscar who was sad. Like, he was the one that was grounded in place. The lightning didn't connect onto anyone. And they ultimately traded one for one. But MDK got so much more. Two towers fall in the mid lane. And MDK, we look back at this fight. And it's Fnatic looking to engage. Previously in the last fight, Jun didn't use his, his ultimate. This time around, he wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. He throws it up, he connects onto four. The ultimate is there. But then look at Oscar. He gets knocked up, he gets rooted in place. That was so close to being a devastating cannon ultimate. But Super just out of range, trades back the kill. And one for one is the outcome of the fight but the damage is so much greater in favor of MDK. Especially when Alvaro didn't have his exhaust, that could have been it, but now he does, I might need to use it. I think he might be dead here. He does have the flash to stand beside me onto Mirwin. Flash stand beside me, the slicing match from Sean again! Don't worry, Oscar. All guys have been there before as Razzle's caught up towards the top side. Super diving in, another bandage shot, but a red buff in the way now for Super. Mystic shot onto it, Noah brings down the lightning, but Super brings down the hammer. Razok is dead once again. The red buff secured for Fnatic. But everything Fnatic do is slammed in their face by MDK, by Super. In fact, 5 0 and 1 now, and he continues to open up. Humanoid has to TP away to stop Fescawi from taking the tier 2 in the bot lane. And Oscar's locked up with a glacial fissure. And it's all coming up roses for MDK. Fnatic are falling apart. This was supposed to be a series where everyone was looking at Fnatic to take it, to push themselves towards the finals, towards that opportunity to right what happened from summer. But MDK have shown up massively in season finals, taking down G2, and now looking like they might topple Fnatic along with them. MDK are just thriving in the chaos, in these skirmishes that are happening all across the map. They're, they're ready to take them. 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v3s, whatever. It's Super and his positioning that is coming out on top. He is dominating in this game five. He is 6-0 and one. He's been involved in the in, in seven of the team's eight kills, and he's only gonna get harder to deal with as the game continues. What a story for MDK. From finals in winter to just desperation in spring and summer, and now about to win their second best of five here in season finals and be the final boss. MDK pushing up mid, Oscar no flash, does have that slicing mouse from Razzle looking for the flank position. MDK can open up on the tier three, but I'm not sure they want to. They just want the pressure, go down to bot, take that instead. A 4,000 gold lead materializing for them now. Yeah, they're leaving Noah on this top side for Fnatic to try and take the turret, but this might just lead MDK to immediately run back over towards the Dragon. There's no real pressure on them right now at top. Sure, the top tower sure will give a bounty, but you have so much pressure on the map, and now everyone on Fnatic is stuck in their base. And the second you walk out, there's just so many good engage tools on well, MDK thanks to this Amumu that you can't really push out. There's just so much threat. I really, like, if we do an interview with MDK, if they're able to close this one out, 
I hope the first question the lot asks is, so how many scrim games did you have on the Moo Moo? Because I reckon it's between zero and one. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's not to say that he's having a bad performance. That's really just to emphasize the flexibility that MBK have really played into following their boot camp. This was a team that wanted to trust in one another and then wanted to believe that when a pro said, I think this pick is good here, that they have the confidence to be able to deliver on that. They've showcased it with the Nidalee. While it has worked and hasn't worked, it's become their comfort pick for Mirwin. And they're doing the same thing, bringing out the Amumu, a champion we have not seen El Yoya ever play on the competitive <laughs> stage. And they're dominating with it. They're up to sole points. They have a 4K gold lead. Super is dominating with nearly a 3k gold lead over Noah, and MDK are set up to win game five and be the final boss. You still have to be very careful though, because a good cannon ult, a good Rakuten engage, an MDK can be routed immediately. So they just have to make sure that they're not falling prey to you know, vision in behind them, giving an opportunity for a flank from Oscar in. And you can see they're doing just that, right? very slowly but surely, clearing out any sort of vision that could exist behind them. There is like one ward just over here, well two I suppose, as you can see, just in behind MDK, but they are playing up towards this top side, so it makes it a little bit difficult for Fnatic to try and look for a play on those wards, but that's kind of the only way Fnatic come back into this. Even though it does have two items, about to stack up that Mana Mune into the Mirror Mana, two items on Noah as well. Oscar and will be able to slice through MDK. Not a huge amount of magic resist on their carries. Oh, none, in fact, as you would expect, but super very, very agile on this Ezreal. Frescawi, the same, can always buffer that rocket jump away. MDK going full Bob Ross, doing it by the numbers, doing it patient, doing it slow, making sure that Fnatic don't have an avenue of approach into these fights. The True Shot Barrage takes a quarter of Oscar in and Jun's health. They're going to start it up. They're going to start it up for Scowie and El Yoya are going to be the main two. While well, the other three just zone them away. I mean, that might be all you need. It certainly looks like it. El Yoya is down to half HP. Now he okay, pulls off it. Yeah, I think maybe they need no okay. tank. El Yoya has the Leandries. They do get the TP out, though. Okay. El Yoya isn't that tanky yet. Jun trying to wait around the corner here. Dashes back. Oscar in and notice. Glacial Prick uh, Fisher going out. Oscar in able to... Lightning rush his way Oscar away does have it. TP though, he so does. they Mad don't want to start the uh, Baron too extensively. Keep an eye on that ward though for a potential TP flank. Oh, it's coming. TP just outside of vision range. Super dashes away from the Glacial Prison. They don't know. Oscar's on his way. The quickness, the Maelstrom. And Fnatic find purchase on the game. They find two super down. Mirwin follows. They had to take it slow. They had to not give that moment to Fnatic. But the greed was there. They tried to go for the all-in in the jungle. And Fnatic fight back. A single ward was all it took. And Oscar could finally find a flank. Dagda talked about it earlier. A Kennen ultimate can be the game changer. And that is exactly what it's going to be for Fnatic. Baron secured. The goal gap is closed. They're back in this game five. How many times over these games have we seen moments like this? Super does so well. He dodges the prison. He dodges everything. But then Oscar Inan is just ready to close in. But it's also John. Just the ultimate flash in with the quickness to deny a Super the opportunity to flash into a position that could be better. That's the lockup the Kenan needed to follow up. And from that position, Fnatic could find that moment. Now with Baron in tow and a minute until the Dragon, they should be able to try and play in these waves to get some of that gold back. But you look at the map stage, it's a big turnaround for Fnatic but they're not out of the woods yet. That is only the first step on a journey they need to take to shut down MDK over the course of the rest of this. Still a gold lead for MDK, about a thousand ahead. Still three items on Super. He is matched now by Humanoid, who has the Lord Doms, the Mana Mune, and the Triforce, and a two and a half, almost 3,000 gold lead over Frescawi, who's only sitting at two items himself. With the Baron push for the next two minutes, Fnatic can start to take some of the standing gold off the map. Elior is still looking for that flank, but with Fnatic being five in the mid lane, I don't think you really want to dive in with that bandage toss. He continues to wait in that bush. He won't find it yet. Fnatic Look back away. Pings towards the top side because Fiscawi's pushing in. Elioya looking to try and catch them in the jungle. Jun dashes forward. Of course, he can always dash back. The safest one to check these bushes is that Jun. 
14 seconds on the soul for MDK. They pulled Fnatic up towards the top size. Humanoid doesn't have TP, realizes it, and m starts to move his way down towards the bottom. And that's the win. MDK got pushed in mid, and now they get to establish themselves in river. Makes it a little bit more difficult for Fnatic to get Avenue's attack, but keep your eyes on Oscar in. And there is little to no vision for MDK to spot out the cannon. Glacial prison, blast cone, slicing Mousham onto Super. He immediately flashes away, but Oscar flashes to follow him, and all the gold lead for MDK evaporates in an instant. Super is no longer North Elioria, and Fnatic are finally fighting back. The blast cone angle from Oscar was fantastic. He finds his way onto Super once more. The flash is all the AD carry had, and he had to run away from his own team, but Oscar wouldn't let him get away with his life. With Jun there to follow, they find another pick. They deny the soul, and Fnatic just like that have reclaimed control over this game. And there's so much gold still for them to pick up. It's even for now, but there's turrets galore. There's a potential pick of Alvaro as Fnatic will get the mid turret. They'll be able to put pressure onto the tier two and bottom side. But the TP, will it even come through the terrace? They stand in for just a moment. The TP will come in. You could have sacked tier two in the mid lane for this, but Alvaro is down immediately. So it's a tier one in the mid lane, a tier two in the bot side, maybe a tier two in mid as well. Baron remains for five seconds. You bump up these minions, you dash in. Super starts to open up, but that tower very shortly will be not long for the rift. It falls. Rubble stands in the mid lane. Rubble surrounds MDK. Their hopes of winning this game crashing around them. Story of this series, really. MDK have been so good at winning out on the skirmishes, playing through the side lanes, getting these advantages. But when it comes to the team fights, Fnatic have been able to find the angles. They find ways to get onto the back line. And Super, he did what he could, but Oscar committed everything to securing it. They do leave their jungler, but Razor's quite happy to tank that up, pops the locket, regroups with his team, and when they rejoin him, they add a kill to the list as well, securing El Yoya and securing the Dragon. And now it becomes a very similar story to Game 4, where MDK had the lead, they were pushing Super. in size, but Fnatic, when they get these moments... Go with the Glacial Prison, cleanses away, He's the Arcane Shift as well, but that's a Glacial Fissure and a cleanse invested by MDK to escape. Oscar doesn't have the flash, of course. They'd use it in the previous fight, but something that Super has to be cautious of with no summoner spells available. Flank wards are super important, and you can see them sitting in the bottom of the jungle. They have insight as to where Friskawi is right now. I mean, the problem for Super is he doesn't only have to care about Oscar's flash, he also has to care about Jun's flash. He has to care about Razzle's flash, right? You can see Fescawi getting chased down towards the bottom side, uses the buster shot, does still have the flash, but no tower still stands here for him. The quickness coming out from Jun won't be able to get in range to catch out Fescawi. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Super pushing forward with Mirwin. MDK trying to get that wave in. Razzle caught out a little bit. Oscar winning, starting to open up, but look at the mystic shot on him. Takes about a third of his HP. Still trying to put the damage down. Fnatic start to collapse. They need to work their way, weave their way back towards the mid lane because MDK have that push forward. The setup is down for Fnatic. Razork's ultimate just about to come off cooldown. Jun no ultimate. So MDK looking for the fight. They might have separated them. Razork able to walk away for now. Speeds up through the river. Oscar gets out just in time. Doesn't have that TP. Super's flash a quarter of the way from being back off cooldown. It's so difficult for him to navigate these fights. He really needs to be behind Elioy, behind Alvaro. Alvaro is exhaust so powerful in these fights as well. He needs to be marking True. Oscar Rinin, because otherwise, that slicing motion is going to put them in a world of hurt. Now, Oscar is at 840 gold. He is about, if I remember correctly, he's about, I think you need 1100 for the combined cost, which means that he's about 200, 300 off that. He needs a few more waves. They're trying to funnel those resources into him as quickly as possible. I believe he should be able to get it before the dragon spawns. And it is a Rabadons in this case. Uh -huh. Just in case people don't know what double needlessly large rod builds into. And with the flash coming up very soon, I'll just quickly check his timer. Looks like 55 seconds. So, I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> Fnatic are going to have everything that they need. They just need that extra bit of gold. He's still there a little is. short. No, he's just oh no, him. there he is. Yep, he's been able to secure it. So Fnatic now poised and ready for the upcoming fight. And MDK, that exhaust is going to be so, so crucial. The thing is, though, Fnatic don't have those same flank wards. They don't have that initial 
opportunity to get Oscar in and into position. So if they can try and keep this position on mid, they can control River, they can set up different flanks for Oscar in because MDK haven't invested any sort of vision into protecting their own bottom side of the map. That could be Fnatic's opportunity. But if they end up in a position where it is a front to back, we've seen how difficult it is for Oscar in to get through Alyoya, get through Alvaro. Ooh. But Alyoya on a flank of his own. Lost going in. Fnatic, Fnatic realized something of it, might be though. happening. They're starting to collapse. Oh, he's been spotted. You're spotted by that ward. Importantly as well, we keep talking about Oscar Winning, and he will be a difference maker in these fights, but Humanoid's at four items. That's like true. If he has any time, any uptime in these battles, he will absolutely shred through MDK. They're not that tanky. Elioia has an Abyssal Mask and a Warden's Mail. We've got a Warmogs and Alvaro, but I'll be honest, you don't really care about Alvaro in fights apart from the Unbreakable and the Exhaust. Fnatic now starting to flank around. Remember, soul point still for MDK. The bandage shots dodged away with the Arctic Assault. Oscar still on that flank. They don't have vision on Oscar. They don't have vision on Oscar. Frescau is a mile away from this fight, and they don't Oscar? have vision on Oscar! Oscar and in! Finds a stun on Super, and he's immediately forced out of the fight. Alvaro will fall first. Elioia will follow Super. The Trusha Barrage will manage to kill off Oscar, but the Drake goes over to Fnatic. And once again, it's Oscar winning! Elioia falls. The smite is gone. Fnatic. They may not have been able to kill Super, but they will definitely get the Baron. Fight after fight, it is just not going MDK's way, and the game is falling further and further away. The darkness on this map is terrifying and full of electric rats, and they are absolutely tearing through MDK in every opportunity they get. Again, it was just great control from Fnatic. They play off of Midwave, deny MDK access to River. Ayoya tries to set up a flank, but doesn't realize he's been flanked on himself, and Brazork. Oh. Great ultimate to start it off. The only reason Super doesn't die immediately is that Alvaro just barely gets that exhaust down in time. But the damage is done. Alvaro low, Elioy is out, and Frescao is only just trying to get into this fight because he was trying to clear a midway. But also the route that came out from Elioy to prevent that follow-up, it could have been so much worse. But credit to Oscar. Like, it, as you rightly said, he's just the, the key initiator. He's the starting piece alongside Razor. There's still so much damage coming up from Humanoid right behind him that uh, as long as he can find those angles of attack, then Fnatic are going to continue to win out on these fights. Mewin trying to be a split push threat. He's trying to be a nuisance, but MDK are running out of resource. They're doing a good job of catching these waves, though. Bot, top, mid, all being pushed up. They're trying to find an angle onto no isolated, but they'll disengage for now. It's the power of Zeri. You can always just dash over towards that top side on the wall. Even though he saw the ward come down, he wasn't scared, didn't burn anything immediately. Now the push in the top lane coming out from Fnatic, they're going to gain control over this blue side jungle. MDK have Fiskawi pushing bot, he's got TP alongside him. Elioya staying around there, actually going to take away the Gromp. It might just be a sack tier two here by MDK. It looks like they're just going to try and trade us. Just look to say, hey, we're going to hard push this. Yes, you'll have Oscar in and go back into base, but if you can set up potentially with Elioya's ultimate, you can kill him and then look to try and trade off on the inhibitor turrets. But now you're a little bit late to the reset. Fnatic are already here. Glacial Prison, Mirwin dodging away, Alvaro caught with the quickness. Fnatic, you've lost here before. And overstep. They take half their HP, the TP coming in behind as well as Frescawi looks to open up. Elioia's going to be spotted on Vision, He's, he joins the fray. Frescawi spotted on that ward as well. Noah gets the slow on Elioia, that's big. Stops MDK from being able to advance further. And Fnatic, I think, realized in that moment, hey, we've been here before, lads, maybe. Just maybe we shouldn't die for the tier three in yeah, The in coordination top. was just a little off because while the ulti comes out from Razork, Jun couldn't quite follow up in time, which means that Alvaro could get in the way and Frescawi could create space, allowing for the potential re-engage. He did commit his TP, which they don't really get much off the back of. Oscar though, gotta be careful. The problem for MDK is if they go on Oscar, Fnatic immediately collapse. They spot that control ward, they back away. Mirwin's pushing out top, they have access have to the as you say, access to Midwave and they can shepherd it towards that inhibitor tower. MDK need to get back sharpish, otherwise yeah, they are losing MDK? their inhibitor. They were trying to find a pick and Vedi... I think that pick didn't materialize. The inhibitor tower in mid lane will fall in a matter of seconds. Frescawi still looking for that flank. A signature of his. The inhibitor short to follow after the turret. Elioia goes in with the first bandage toss. He's looking for that second, but there's minions in the way. The Glacial Prison going wide. Oscar in hanging near the back. No flash for him. Super splash. Slightly short of cooldown. 
Now it dodges to the side of the spear for Scan. We're waiting in this bush, still unable to find anything. Ayoya having no flash means it's kind of difficult for him to use that minion as a taxi service into the back line of Fnatic, and they know it. So happy to just stick around. They get the inhibitor, but that is the end of the Baron push. And now at a minute until Soul for MDK, a third Hextech Dragon for Fnatic. It feels like this is going to be another moment where it all comes down to positioning. This time around, though, it's MDK who are already getting some vision control down. But again, it's look at the bottom side of Fnatic's jungle. It is completely dark once more. Oyoya now starting to move in to get some control, but just a pink ward at the moment. Maybe look for a pick as they fake a reset. Importantly, not too many good flank wards for Oscar Rin. There's one in the mid lane, but if you're playing around the Drake, the mid lane one doesn't matter as much. It takes a long time to get there to join the team. Both the teams are going to butt heads around they this mid wave. A couple of things come out, as you say. TP towards the bottom side, out of vision for now. Razzle dashing in with the Arctic Assault. It's Humanoid who comes in to join the battle. And still... That's the base. Midway push for Fnatic. MDK gonna start to back away. Oscar in and can try and keep them around. for Fiskawi trying to do enough to, to keep Super bases. around. He's gonna interrupt two. Super and Fiskawi unable to get back. He can TP Oscar onto the, the TP creep. in. Onto the Super Minion would be the target. Can't keep it alive yet. The quickness coming out. Fnatic have walked in the front door. And MDK, they left it unlocked. Fnatic takes the series. And MDK get nothing as Fnatic just walked through the base. What a finish. MDK caught with their pants down. They were interrupted by Oscar in and it was not a final fight. It was not an epic moment. Fnatic saw the path in front of them and they sprinted towards the finish line. Path of least resistance. MDK were so in their head about finding the flank, finding the vision, getting that jump onto Fnatic that they just didn't think they have super minions in the mid lane and we can't clear it out. Fnatic just walk straight down and kill everything. And great, great shot calling for Fnatic in that moment. Because <laughs> yeah. like, as I much mean, as MDK yes. left it like an open base, you have to make the decision in that moment. You can vote for one of those Fnatic players in your key player of the game, and LEC on X. It's Oscar in and Humanoid and Noah as your options. I mean, what a fantastic series. Back and forth, we got to see the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. What a way for it to end. Sometimes you just got the key, man. You just yeah. walk through the door, you open it up. <laughs> well, they didn't need they didn't the key. Yeah. It's just open. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, what a cro close series. What a great series. It will be MTK, the ghost to face G2 for a rematch on Saturday. And Fnatic will be waiting in the finals. Great comeback, massive shout out to Oscar. His cannon was instrumental in turning this game around. Oh, it definitely was. Like, huge shout out to Fnatic for everything they did up until that moment. The end is just funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's just one of those moments where you make that mistake once as a team and you never make that mistake yeah. again. It just, unfortunately for MDK, today was the day they made that mistake. Yeah. Wow. I mean. <laughs> That, I mean, that... I, I think... hope you had as much fun as we did. Yeah. We had a lot, like that series, <laughs> it had really good clean games from both teams. It had incredible, like, close games. It had a couple of big throws, which is always a bit of fun. And I think, like, overall... Really enjoyed it. But I do think it showcased what MDK have learned in their boot camp. Like, yeah. they actually did show up well against Fnatic. There was clearly a lot of improvement on how they wanted to approach objective I setups mean, and that. It's just at the end of the day, Fnatic just came out on top. Our top three moment. is competitive. Yep. Exactly. I mean, and now we're going to get the rematch of G2 versus MDK, which MDK yeah. did get the better of them last time. Uh, I'm excited to see how things pan out. You can do it. <laughs> Let's go. That's why I pointed Let's go you. here from the Kenna master himself, Oscar, and the Mario Bonvoy post-game check-in. We can talk about this now, if you want. So, <laughs> thank you so yeah. much, Oscar, for joining me uh, after this banger and a half, if I may say, yeah. against MDK today. What, what are your impressions of this series? How do you feel right now? Um, I mean, I think they were a bit too chaotic, in my opinion. I think we fell a bit in the game. I uh -huh. think we didn't play as slow as controlled as we should have, mm -hmm. because I think MDK likes to fight and likes to create chaos, and I think that's where they play the best. And I think we got a bit into their game, but yeah, yeah I think we still outplayed them in, in their game, I guess, so. I mean, practice in chaos is still good practice, I guess, for you guys, especially heading in uh, finals. I want to talk about that last draft, because you were hovering Kennen uh, and Rumble. Why did you pick Kennen instead of Rumble? Because it feels like you could have had easier setups against their composition with Rumble, for instance, and I was wondering how much of flanks you could find with Kennen coupled with Rakan, so... What was your decision-making here? 
Um, I mean, I think with Rumble, I probably would have had a way better learning phase against okay. Nidalee because, yeah, I mean, Kennen is pretty hard, I would say, against Nidalee. But I think this game, Kennen felt way better. I don't think I had a lot of setup with Rumble uh -huh. and we needed AP, so I wanted to pick one of these two champions. And yeah, I just said, okay, I will survive the lane and I will just flank after and yeah. create a good fight, I guess. And it was about creating this opportunity specifically, which was not easy to do, I feel. We're going to take a look at one replay here, one that went well for you. You can be reassured it was actually a really, really nice play for Fnatic, but it looked like it was really complicated to find this flank that we just talked about, Oscar. So talk me through communication and how did you manage to actually well, fight that Drake the way you just did now? Yeah, I mean, we, we were on mid and we saw them going bot side and we, we knew that they were going to go to bot side for the break. And we spotted the Amumu, we tried to get control. And when Amumu left the bushes, I just swept and went for a super okay. flank just when they <laughs> left the bush. And yeah, I found the Ezreal, they didn't know because they were one second before in the bush, yeah. I didn't expect it, and yeah. It was a great play from you guys, and it, you kept the ball running after that to win the series in the end. Take on Nidalee, uh, I've asked the coaching staff from MDK, what was their take on the pick, why did they feel so comfortable picking this champion? It is a Mervin comfort pick from what they told me, but playing against this kind of champion, how do you feel? It feels um, like you don't know the matchups really, it's not played top lane, so I feel like it makes it hard maybe, or you can get caught off guard. I mean, I think Neil is just a really, really strong champion in lane. Yeah. I think it doesn't probably have counters in lane. Like, I don't think something just wins really hard into Neil. So I just went to outscale uh, the champion. Mm -hmm. I think later on it's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I think it scales, like, it doesn't do anything later on. It's not tanky, it doesn't deal that much. Like, I feel like it's not insane. So I just went to, okay, I will pick a Santa, I'll pick Kennen, and I'll be a better champion. I'll, Right. Be fine in the lane, and that's it. That's it, that's it. And it yeah. worked in the end, I mean, as long as you can counter the laning phase. Last question for you, of course, you made it to finals yet again. Uh, we're going to see you on stage in Munich in the last day of the LEC. Wh what is your take on your journey, Oscar? Because you made it last year as well. You had, you had to watch a side, actually, because, yeah, it was not the best time for you with your wrist. But talk me about making it to these finals yet again and fighting for your spot once again. I mean, it feels good to actually be able to play finals right. in, like in front of so many people. Uh, last time, like it was a bit heartbreaking for me. It was not easy to just watch it from the outside. Uh, obviously, I wanted to play. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it feels nice that I can play this time. And yeah. uh, I think we are playing pretty well. So let's see how, how it goes. But uh, I think we are going to do pretty well. I'm looking forward to seeing you on stage. And it looks like you're looking forward to being on stage as well. Oscar, thank you so much. Quick info, who, who do we have on PGL on the other side, if you guys can give me the idea? I think it's Razork. Any words for your jungler before you, we go? Yeah, I think like a Chorita played pretty well today. I think pretty solid Maokai, some twist. He played Maokai, right. Ivern. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you so much, Oscar. See you next week in Munich. Thank you. Razor, over to you with Shots in PGL and this pretty good performance you had.